presence here. I know that that presence can go right through that recording and go into anybody's house, anybody's life, because it's not just here in this building. It's in our hearts and it's throughout this whole world. If you want it to be, if you want to feel it, you can if we humble ourselves and we get ourselves out of the way and walk in His Spirit. I've felt it in recordings that we've heard years past, still in there, stirred up because it stirs up what's within you. It stirs up that Holy Spirit inside Amen. of you that you put in there when you bowed your head, when that convicting power of God was upon you and you had to make a choice either to move out or let Him move into your heart. That's where it came from and that's where it'll be when you realize that it's there and you come to it and you let it be a part of your life because He wants it to be a part of your life. That Holy Spirit, an extension of God, the Comforter, He wants it to be a part of your life to strengthen your life, to mold you into what He wants you to be. But we have to accept it. We have to want to feel it. We can clog it up and block it out with our own fleshly desires, but it's up to us to, to connect to God's Holy Spirit. And that's just by wanting to serve Him and worship Jesus. That's just by loving God and loving everybody else, just like we said. Loving God with all our heart and our soul and our mind and our strength and loving everybody else in this whole world. Everybody that we come in contact with in this whole world is our neighbor. That's who we love. That's who we love. Even that person on death row that's committed an awful thing, still God wants to forgive them. The only unpardonable sin is for you to, to see death not having the blood of Jesus Christ upon and His convicting power coming to you and you rejecting it. He's only obligated to ask one time. He's only obligated to knock at your heart's door one time. And it's up to you to make that choice. You don't want a robot. There ain't no robots in this world. In our hearts, it's free will. We have a choice to come to His house and thank Him for all He's done and not let superstition, fears, burdens, worries, doubts cumber us down and keep us from serving Him. And I want to talk about that this morning. It just went right in to what the Lord's done give me in the message. Have you ever been in this life and you wake up and you feel like this, the day is just the same as yesterday and you're just going through the motions and nothing seems to go anywhere. Your life just is stagnant. You're never moving forward. You're just, it just stays the same. And I feel that way sometimes. Just get up and go to work. And it's the same old thing day after day. It doesn't have to be that way. If you rely on Jesus Christ, every day can be another opportunity to serve Him. And all these doubts and these fears, even of death and cumbered down with sadness and depression and, or sickness or whatever the devil or God is using to grow you and to strengthen you, except without us acknowledging it, it just seems like the devil just trying to tear us down. But God uses these things to mold us. Everything worketh good to them that love the Lord. You have to acknowledge that, seek it out, understand what God's trying to do in your life. He's either trying to move you closer or He's trying to move somebody else closer through you. He's working in those things. There's a reason that things happen in your life. It's not by chance. It's not fate. It's divine intervention in your life. And it matters. And in the end, you'll be stronger or you'll gain ultimate healing and glory. Either one. Or you can turn from God and let it slowly destroy you because He will not stop because He cares enough about you to keep the pressure on until you break the mold and turn to Him. That's how much He cares. He's a disciplinary, tough love God. Did you get that tough love, though? It's love. It's out of love. It's not something He's trying to punish us. He already has a divine, eternal punishment. He don't want anybody to go there. He'd, I'd rather suffer here the, all the days of my life and then turn to Jesus Christ and learn of divine heaven and mercy and the blood of Jesus Christ and have it applied to my heart than to live my life here in the lap of luxury and then die and burn in, a, in an eternal hell. Amen. I'd rather make you mad at me this morning 
telling you that you need a Savior, that none is righteous, no, not one. Every deed that you're doing other than what's in this book is against the law of God, and it's against what God wants for your life. Everything that you're doing for yourself, selfishly in the flesh, needs to be done away with and slowly brought to supplication and to, to servitude of Jesus Christ. Everything. Our whole life. We're going to talk in two places. Be in Luke, and then we're going to jump over to John, but we're going to go to Luke first. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. We're going to be in the 38th verse. Luke chapter 10. Verse 38 reads like this. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about with much serving and came to him and said, Lord, Dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day, Lord Jesus. We know that there's troubles all around us, Lord, but you put us in the eye of the storm, Lord, your will. Just help us to walk in this service, go according to your will. Help us that we might get what you'd have us to get out of this scripture. And what I say, Lord Jesus, just come directly from you, Lord Jesus. Just watch over us. Thank God for us. Just give us safe journeys, Lord, and, safe, and just help us, Lord, in all our sick and afflicted. God, direct. Jesus, have a name I humbly pray. Amen. 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 Here's what blows my mind about this scripture. Jesus himself, a direct descendant of God, a direct extension of God himself, was in her house, and she was so consumed with the work, serving him, probably no doubt, fixing meal for all of them, probably doing dishes, whatever there was to be done, and didn't acknowledge Jesus in the whole thing. And then the one that was acknowledging Jesus, dropping everything to follow Jesus Christ and to serve him and do, and we're going to go to another place and see what Mary was doing, but what she was doing, and totally lost the big picture of the whole point of her existence in that moment. The whole point of what she was supposed to be doing, and that Jesus was about to die, and that Jesus was about to wash away all the sins of the whole world. She was so wrapped up in this life and what needed to be done. She didn't acknowledge Jesus in her life. Now let's see what Mary was doing. For that we have to go over to John chapter 12. John chapter 12. And I believe this is the same people. And this is the same story just told a different way. John chapter 12, verse 1. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them 
that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spike spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, and his house was filled, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold of thee of three hundred for three hundred pence and given to the poor? This he said, not what he cared, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had a had the bag and bare what was put therein. Then he said, Jesus, let her alone. Against the day of my bearing hath she kept this. For the poor always ye have with you, but me ye have not always. So Mary was anointing Jesus. Her whole world was revolved about around Jesus at that moment. And that, while Martha at this time was just worried about her helping her finish doing the dishes. Be careful in this life that we get wrapped up in the troubles and things of this world and we don't acknowledge Jesus in those things. We don't acknowledge Jesus in the death that we're surrounded by. We don't acknowledge Jesus in our own life and the people that we come in contact with. We don't get wrapped up so much in the works of God that we forget about faith in Jesus Christ. Dennis, if you got so consumed with what you were doing in Sunday school that you forgot to lift up your hand like you did a while ago and wasn't able to get in the service that wouldn't have done, nobody, wouldn't have done you no good with it. Amen. But yet if we can have a balance of working for God and praising Him at the same time, how much more can we influence people in this world? Amen. We can work and do what we have to do out in this world to survive and to provide for our family or we can not get bound down if we are uh, sitting at home or whatever happens and get consumed in things and forget that God is in control of everything and forget to serve Him and honor Him. It, it ha You have to pursue that. It's not something that's going to come to you. It's not something that's just going to knock on your door and it be found. We have to seek Jesus out. He is there. We have to come to Him like the prodigal son. The Father's waiting. The Son had to come to Him. Jesus wants you to come to Him. Jesus wants you to acknowledge Him in all your ways. He don't want you to get wrapped up in this life. It's so easy. And see, I, I can sit here and sometimes it's hard for me to get in the service because I'm so wrapped up and trying to get it right and see what I'm supposed to say and do what I'm supposed to do in the message that it's hard for me to get into the service. And that's wrong. And that's something I have to work on. Don't forget to praise God for everything good in your life Amen. and get wound up in what you're supposed to be doing. See, as soon as you get off the altar in the old Jewish church or whenever you would confess to God, they'd start telling you how to live your life, start telling you how to do it. That's God's job. God is the judge, and he will convict your heart if you want him to, if you don't block it out, if you don't have a stony heart of this world. He will convict. It's our job to just love and let our life be an example. But how can our life be an example if we've not got Jesus showing through our life? It's not you personally. It's not your own righteousness. It's Jesus' righteousness that you've shown through. That oil that you pour at the feet of Jesus. It's that testimony that you have of Jesus Christ and what you choose to give to Him that smells up the whole house. That we can tell as we walk in the door that you've got that Holy Spirit about you. That's what's important. We can bottle it up. We can keep it inside. We cannot do what the Holy Spirit tells us. And we can just sit here and feel nothing Sunday after Sunday. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's a dead church. That's right. what we feel out. And I've been there and I've done that. And it's no good to anybody. But it can't be pulled from this house into that recording. It can't be pulled and flow breast from breast. If once it gets to you, you shut it out. And all it is, is it's not that it's here. It's in you. And it's like so many people say, well, that preacher, he just wasn't, I just didn't feel the spirit on him. It's your spirit that wasn't ignited by you not being where you need to be. Amen. If the truth is being told, one time in the Bible, the truth 
was being told by a donkey, a physical, a physical donkey, and that trying to get him a person to stop and to not go into an angel that was about to kill him. He was trying to save his life. And if you can't, God can use anybody in anything for the truth. It's up to you to want to be used by God Amen. and to allow Him to work through your life. Yeah. And if you're saved, if you're lost, getting wrapped up in this world and getting crazed by ever blown around with every wind and doctrine, know what the truth is. The best place to find it is learn in the book of John about Jesus Christ and who He was and turn to Romans and see how to accept Him as he is, not as the way you want him to be, not as the way the popular culture thinks that he is, but the true God of the I am, who always was, always is, and always will be. <coughs> Accepting him for who he is in your life, knowing that your pride and your righteousness won't get you anywhere in this life, Amen. and that you need a cross, that you need blood, not and what do I mean by the blood? You need his atonement, his blood sacrifice for your sin. In the law, it was a spotless lamb. In the Moses' time, it was blood, spotless lamb on the doorposts like we talked about earlier. And it kept the death angel from passing by. You no longer have to see death and feel the sting of death if you have the blood applied to your heart's door. We're translated into the kingdom of God. Our flesh will fall to the dust from which it came, but we'll never have to feel death. There'll be somebody right there as we pass on to glory. That's blessed assurance. And that's what every Christian has if we choose to acknowledge it. Amen. If we want to have the truth, if we're not cumbered and burdened and stressed out and filled with all this doubt and faithlessness, it's easy to get that way if you're just going to listen to what they say on TV, if you're just going to never open this book up and go with popular opinion. It says to seek out your own salvation. Don't take my word for it. Read it for yourself. Amen. Amen. I'm going to end with Scripture. It's going to be a lot, so bear with me. But just listen to this. <clears throat> It's chapter 10 again of Luke. Chapter 10 of Luke. <clears throat> Starting at the first verse this time. Chapter 1, or chapter 10 of Luke, verse 1. Reads like this. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Go your ways, behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither purse nor scrip nor shoes and salute no man by the way. And into whatsoever house ye enter, say, or first say, peace be, be to this house. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again, and in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house, and into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you, and heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. But into whosoever city ye enter and they receive you not, go your ways out into the streets or the same and say, Even the very dust of your city which cleaveth on us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be ye sure of this, 
that the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom. Find my place again. <clears throat> for Sodom, then for that city. Woe unto thee, Cherazin. Woe unto thee, Beth Bethsaida. For if the mighty works hath been done in Tyre and Sidon, which have been done in you, they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which are exalted to heaven, shall be thrust down to hell. He that heareth you heareth me, and he that despiseth you despises me, and he that despises me despises him that sent me. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven and I'll stop reading right there Fear is always going to be there. And then let me give you a physical example. As I was preaching there, the most scared thing I am of this world is waspers, and there's one stuck on my pant leg right now. <laughs> but I've got to keep going. We've got to keep moving. That fear is always going to be there. But it's what we do with it. Are we going to persevere and do what God wants us to do physically? But I'm talking about out to your life. Are we going to keep moving on or are we going to give in to that fear and start running around and give in to it like everybody else seems like crazy over stuff that's happening in this world? Trust, there's no consequence, like I've said before, for trusting God's will. There's things in your life that are burdening you down. It may be your daily walk, it may be your work, it may be things in your life. Give it to Jesus Christ. It may be that you're just discovering that you're lost and that you need a Savior. This is the place to take it. Wherever you are, humble yourself before a living God and know that He is God and He's over everything. Pour your whole life into Him and let Him guide your life. And those things that you're afraid of will pass on by and they won't harm you. Just like Daniel in the lion's den, those roaring lions all around us, the social structure, the saying coexist with everybody, there's sin and everything that easily besets man that's in your mind constantly battling with what you should do and the decisions you should make. You woke up this morning and Satan put an excuse for you to stay home and not go to church in your mind. I guarantee you. Man, this bed feels awful good. Or man, I'm getting a little cough. Or all these things that there's always going to be. And there's reasons that we can't be here in the house of God. God knows that. And that's all to the purpose of God. But there's sometimes that we let excuses and things of this world keep us from serving Him and doing what He has us to do. And when we and He keeps us from serving Him and doing what He has us to do, when we let that happen, it's not hurting us, it's hurting the people that we could have touched by doing His will. It's not just hurting us, but it hurts you. When somebody was saved in the old, in the old in the New Testament, their whole household was saved in the process because it changed everything about them and who there was and everybody that lived with them saw it. And that's how it can be for you. And that's what I'm praying that happens for you. But we have to not give in to these things and get so unconcerned in our daily life and forget to acknowledge Him and forget to worship Him. This house is a house of worship and so many people have forgot to worship Him. 
Sure, they say that they're working for him. They may be good people out here, and they may do a kind, compassionate thing every once in a while. They may even be uh, out doing something for him right now. But they forgot to worship him and to praise him and acknowledge him. It matters, and he wants praise. And like I've said before, he created you, and he wants you to acknowledge that creation. Amen. He created you, and he wants you to acknowledge that he created you. That's what he wants, it's for you to acknowledge his existence. You ever been around, and it, uh, you don't feel like you've been noticed, even at a big party, you just have to sit there, and you don't feel like that you're being noticed, you don't feel like you belong. Is that the saddest thing I've ever heard, that God doesn't feel like he belongs in the world that he created. Amen. In the world that he created, does he feel like he belongs? I want to tell, tell him that he belongs in this house. Amen. And he belongs in my heart, and I hope you feel the same. And he'll continue to belong if we want him to. The reason God's not in the schoolhouses and letting things happen in this world, the reason why God's not in the house when a guy puts a gun to his head and blows his brains out, the reason why... The murder and the rape continues is because we've asked God to leave. Because they've never asked God to be a part of their life. And we, and innocent people have to suffer for those decisions. Your life just doesn't affect you. It affects everybody that loves you. Everybody that you come in contact with. And we owe it to God to give Him a part of our life. We owe it to God to give Him all of our life. Is He in the back seat? Or is He in the driver's seat of your life? We're all down this road. We're all riding as we get a song. But he wants to be the most important thing in your life. Mm -hmm. He's up here. He's driving. Yeah, he's driving. He's either number one or he ain't. That's right. That's right. But it's your choice. If that convicting power of God's upon you, stop wherever you're at. And ask Jesus to be a part of your life. For it was his whole purpose of being on this earth was to give you an opportunity to not have to go to an awful place called hell. There's a heaven and there is a hell. It's a reality. And there's enough proof and history to back up the Bible to prove it. But it's up to you to prove it to your own heart. As we sing. It's 396, bottom of the page. When my way groweth dear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost gone, hear my cry, hear my call, hold my hand lest I fall. Take my hand. Precious Lord, and lead me home. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me. Take my hand, precious Lord.
keep us from holding Jesus in our hearts. It may be depression, thinking that you're not good enough. But it's not that you're not good enough. Jesus, it's His righteousness that we rely on. It could be doubt. You don't even believe that He is what He is, and you have to read and find out. It could be vanity that you're so wrapped up in yourself that you can't see what God's trying to do in your own life and what He's doing in this world. It could be money that you're so wrapped up in making money that you can't see that God is the one that gives it all to you and He can take it all away just like that. And we have to acknowledge Him and be a steward of what He's given us. Whatever it is that God's using, God, Jesus is there to take it away and give you power over that thing if we put Him in our lives. Amen. Anybody got anything on your heart before we close? I just want to say one thing. I love you, God, today. And I want to thank the Lord for this wonderful spirit that I can feel this morning. But I came to worship the Lord this morning. And this world gets winding down, it gets worse and worse. And we see the Lord. You know, it excites my spiritual man that, that I'm going to get to see Jesus one of these days. And I just want to praise his name this morning and thank you. I want to tell each and every one of them that I love you. It's been an honor to get to know each and every one of you. Just as a new, you go through life, meeting new people and things like that as you move through life, and it's been a blessing to me. I appreciate you. You know how he's on my mind. I just want to let there no doubt in his mind that, that I love Jesus. Amen. Maybe you get to know me and find out a lot of things about me that you may not like. But you one thing I want you to know that I love all of you. Sung the other night at, at another church I did on things a Saturday night, last Saturday night. And keep going, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, no, we're all we're all the church of God. But you couldn't feel what we feel here this morning. There was something blocking it and it was dry. And I'm not saying anything bad about them people, but that's a situation that anybody can get in. And I don't ever want us to get in that position. And then back to what you said, I want to be able, on my gravestone, or maybe, I'm not there yet, but I want it to be that when somebody sees me, that they see Jesus first. That's what I want to be, and that's what I want to strive to be, because if I give you anything of myself, it won't do you any good, but if I give you something of Him that He put inside of me, it is something special. Amen. Anybody else? If not, we'll, we'll do it again tonight.